Welcome to Watch Like a Kid, a podcast where we watch your kid shows so you don't have to. We are your hosts, Diane and Gabrielle. So come, be a kid with us. Hey, Gabby. Hi, Diane. I guess, what do we have to cover today? I don't know. I just hope that we can use, like, actual real sentences. (sighs) You know, because we're poets. So. Yeah, and just, like, nobody gets us. Yeah, no one gets us. We're not beer sluts. Ugh. Like everybody else. Like ev- everybody else. We're totally unique. Yeah. And why are we unique today? Because we are Lisa, not Lisa Frank. Lisa Frankenstein. Frankenstein. The new movie that just came out. Lisa Frankenstein. That's right. We're covering it today, and if you are listening and not watching, we are currently dressed to impress. We are wearing what we could find in my closet, at least, that would resemble a rebellious 80s punky teen. Yep. I think we're killing it. I think so, you know? I think we're doing a good job. I'm not like, I never was like a goth girl. But I'm not gonna, this is kind of fun. This was so fun. This was kind of fun. I feel like I would have been so much more into makeup if I was a teen in the 80s because you could just. It was so playful. It was fun. It was creative. You could do a lot. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, and way too much of everything. Way too much of everything. And I love that. And it was was iconic. Yeah. I I wish I had better mascara because her mascara in the movie was like insane. So great. Yeah. So Lisa Frankenstein is kind of like. An 80s teen horror comedy. Oh, what they call it? A Zomcom. A Zomcom. <laughs> yes. Which we love. And so that is why our theme today is kind of our take on it, so to speak. Got the fishnet stockings. Amazing. We got the scrunchies. I'm totally going to get a headache by the end of this. With oh, my yeah. Hair. We. Oh, as high as ponies. it will go. I think it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I was so. It was so fun. I hadn't been to the movies in a hot second i've not been to the movies on a friday in a hot second and i, I remember i got i got there before a few minutes before you did and i remember i was texting you because the people in the theater to go see that movie were all these like kind of older balding men right. that were just by themselves and i was like do they think that it's about the Frankenstein? Do they think they're seeing like... I don't know what they thought, but they had a great time. They had a great time. There was a guy in front of us who was just there by himself, fully, just like, he looked like he was maybe in his 50s, and he was just laughing along at the same moments we did. Loved it. Loved it. Even I don't even think he was upset that we kept making jokes and talking through the movie. I think he was like, chill about it. I think he probably laughed when he heard some of our jokes. jokes. (laughs) Yeah. It was so funny. I thought it was, I thought it was a great movie. I was a little misled, so I told Diana I wanted to go in blind. Yeah, I was ready to tell you at least at least a little bit about Here's, it. Something about me is I am not, like, the biggest horror girl. And I knew it was, like, going to be a little horror, but I knew it was going to be horror comedy, so I was like, this is be, it'll be fine. I go in, and the man who was, like, taking our tickets, by the way, shout out to all the workers who work at the Lincoln Square AMC Theater because y'all are, They're like, great. trained on another level. Um, really amazing. But he was like really, really funny rom-com you're about to walk into. And I was like, oh, rom-com. Okay. I can, I can do a rom-com. That'd be cute. I thought it was going to be like a warm bodies kind of situation or something. Oh, love I warm bodies. In. I'm waiting for the rom part of this rom-com to begin. And y'all, it begins, but maybe like 80% into the movie, we get a, we get the rom. <laughs> but Zom-com is way more Zom-com appropriate. Zom-com was way Zom-com more appropriate. Way- See, that same guy you're talking about, when I showed him my ticket, he was like, ah, great fanfic made into a movie along in theater five. And I was like, was it a fanfic? What? And so we really had to do our research after. I love going in blind a bit, though, into these movies. I'm really I glad like, yeah. that we wait to do the research after. Yes, because then you get the full reaction. Like, I didn't watch a trailer or anything. And we went on opening anything. night. Yes. I think it did come out on Friday. Yes. And also, it's... because I went in blind, I definitely thought this was going to be a spoof on Lisa Frank. Because, well, why was it why. not? Why was it not Because that? Lisa Frank is, like, 90s. Okay, but Lisa Frank? 
Well, I didn't know it was 80s or anything because I'm going in blind. I didn't know it was supposed to said in the 80s, y'all. I didn't know that because I'm going in blind. But it's like Lisa Frank Einstein. So I'm thinking, oh, hilarious. It's going to be Lisa Frank coded. We're going to get like mermaids and unicorns and dolphins. like dolphins in pink water. And I was really excited for this. And her last name's not even Frank. Her last name is Swartz. Yeah, that actually kind of got me. I didn't. Well, it made sense along the way because she is kind of like Frankenstein. Yes. So, you know, okay, so should I just go into a synopsis because I'm sure everyone is confused? Let's do it. I'm sure people have even heard of this movie. Um, okay, so I'm going to be reading from my computer. And we really committed to the bit. We are not wearing our glasses, so we're blind. So I'm yes. going to put my. <laughs> give me one moment while I put my. <laughs> Bifocals on. <laughs> okay, so. Lisa Frankenstein is a senior starting at a new high school, forced into a new family. Shortly after her mom was brutally murdered in front of her eyes, her dad remarries, and of course, her stepmother is psycho, her stepsister is Miss Popular, and her dad classically unaware of it all. Not fitting in anywhere and missing her mother, she finds comfort in visiting the long-forgotten grave of a Victoria-era man. One night, there's a strange storm and green lightning strikes the grave, making the creature come to life. He finds Lisa, and together they embark on a journey to replace several of his missing body parts, albeit in quite unorthodox ways. With each stitch she sews, her life spirals into over-the-top, hilarious chaos, resulting in a dramatic and yet still endearing romantic climax. This movie is rated PG-13 for violent content, bloody images, sexual material language, sexual assault, teen drinking, and drug content. Bravo. Thank you. Although the word endearing, debatable. I (laughs) know. I remember at the end you were like, oh. Like a little bit. You were like, oh. No, she is lying because in this movie, the lights go on. We have a picture to prove it. The lights go on and my face was like. I was disgusted. I was horrified. I was traumatized. <laughs> I will never be the same. Okay, but you have to admit that they it it was a pretty good. It was cute. It was a good story. So uh, it, apparently the the um, Diablo Cody who wrote it did Jennifer's Body, and I've never seen Jennifer's Body. I hear it's good. I've never seen it. it way ahead of its time. <laughs> Phenomenal. You guys go. Ahead. That one's a li- little more mature than this movie. This movie is a lot more scaled back. But I thought it was amazing. Catherine Newton, I think, did a great job as Lisa Swallows. Oh, she did Swallows. Or Lisa Frankenstein. She was perfect. She was perfect. She she gave, like, Edward Scissorhands, mm-hmm. meets Heathers, like, all sorts of nods to different kind of horror films yeah. while kind of making it kitschy and over the top. Like, they weren't trying to be the same film or be like dramatic and super artsy they were just kind of like saying like that's an ode to it right and to mary shelley yeah as a whole anyway right frankenstein you know Mm -hmm. i thought cole sprouse he's the creature Mm -hmm. adorable he says he doesn't speak until until the very end the very end when he apparently is super literate and can read yeah and everything so wonderful i i wonder how he auditioned (laughs) did he just like have to go in there and Ah. kind of grow Yes, so he is the creature. That's his name in the film. And he comes to life. He is the grave that she was kind of pining over. Yeah, she her, her sister told her it was a little weird. But she was like, you know, people should not be forgotten. Yeah. So she goes and remembers this man. And I think she puts her mother's rosary on the grave yeah. and everything. And that's how he finds her and gives yeah. it to her. And then she connects it. Right. Because he looks like a zombie. Yes. And he can't speak. Right. He is in desperate need of a bath. And she finds all of this very cute. (laughs) Considering she witnessed her mother being hacked up brutally by some sort of axe murderer that they just kind of skip over. They kind of make it into this sort of very odd dry humor. Which I think is the point because I do think they're making fun of the 80s a little bit where like everyone just kind of minds their own business and it's like don't worry about it you know yeah. like there's a lot of scenes where people are like screaming and the neighbor's like should we check in on that nah, it's probably yeah. that weird girl next door you know <laughs> whatever yeah and for a while after that incident she apparently didn't talk out of trauma um so she realizes she's talking all the time to the creature because he can't talk yes and so in a way it kind of helps her heal it bit, does which is cute heal is sticky <laughs> I, it gets her out of a shell is it in a positive way <laughs> 
This is definitely one. Of we those won't movies. give that away. Yeah, it's definitely one of those movies where like the main character goes into a little bit of a spiral, but like well, you kind of for it's, her. but it's a fun spiral. Yeah. Um, where you're like, this isn't going to end well, right? At all, but you do, you honey. Yeah, because the movie's so good at making you feel detached from everything. It's just yes. funny. It's definitely just a dark comedy. So yeah, it's, don't don't go in taking anything seriously. I don't, like nothing. Don't take any of it seriously. Just yeah, I think that actually fun. that made me like it more. Mm-hmm. Being like it is going to be just kind of silly and stupid but for me personally i thought it was great for like a teen rom-com or zom-com in this instance (laughs) like if i was a teen watching it i would be like this is hilarious i mean yes it's still stupid but i still thought it was good if i were teen watching it i would see i was very sheltered kid i'm not gonna lie if i were teen watching this i would probably be like really uncomfortable yeah it is like probably i mean i've never seen Jennifer's body, so it probably definitely is tamer than Jennifer's body. Way more. But it also is a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. In certain yes. scenes, it is There a were lot. certain parts where you're like, oh, this is amazing. And then, like, 20 minutes in the movie, it just escalates. And then it kind of tones it back. And then it yeah. escalates. And then it tones it all back. Yeah. And there were certain times in the movie with – and it wasn't even really that packed of a theater. But it was – everybody was laughing, oh, laughing, shouting, hooting, and hollering. And some of the dialogue was – absolutely hilarious the dialogue was so funny so they have the stepsister and normally you would hate her because she's miss popular right but at the same time they made her so like kind of sweet she's like i'm my i'm too perfect to have your problems <laughs> but you've got great boobs like it's she's yeah. just her comments are hilarious where is it there was one time so um catherine newton the main character lisa she has a crush on this cute michael trent alternative boy he's like what is the editor-in-chief yeah he's the eic of the literary magazine he wears a leather jacket you know he reads poetry so he's like goes up to the two of them and he's quoting oscar wilde and then the stepsister goes well in the terms of oscar the grouch scram Scram. (laughs) really great stuff i loved her and she's also you like her too because she her sister the main character lisa lisa yeah is very strange like there's no question about that but the pop she never like makes her i don't think she ever makes her feel strange Uh she never makes her feel weird she's always like supportive of even her weird stuff the only time except for maybe she like said one thing about her blush isn't that's not the right blush for her color for her but like for the most part she's really like accepting that's where in right in the beginning they're getting ready for a party and it makes us think like oh we don't like her stepsister but on the way to the party, she goes, okay, so what's the thing that you like about school or how are you fitting yeah. in so far? You're going to do great. Come to this party with me. Like, sure, I'll tell all my friends about your mom being brutally murdered. But, yeah. like, other than that, we're good, you know. And even when she accidentally partakes in illicit drugs, um, <laughs> her sister is like, who gave this to you? And goes and, like, yeah, tells them all. I think that that's, the movie's really good at subverting expectations, which is why it's so funny. Because you're exactly. thinking it's going to go one way and then it kind of goes another way. And even when you do think it's going to go some way and it does go that way, it goes that way in a way that you're still like, what? <laughs> which is which is a, what I love in movies. Yeah. Where even if it's obvious, mm-hmm. the way they make it happen, and in this case, the times that you kn- you knew what was about to happen, they did it in an overdramatic yes, way. Yes, and it was so funny. And especially... Catherine Newton, the way she used her body language and the way her facial expressions and the way she acted in the character made it all the better. Really so good. She did a phenomenal job. No notes. No notes. No notes. No notes. I think I've liked her in basically everything she's been in. What else has so, she been in? I don't know if I know her anything. Um, she was in, I remember, I think she was in um, a couple episodes of Supernatural when she was like still real. Like, I was about to say, how old she? was like she? a teenager and she played a teenager and I thought she was hilarious, little, I mean, really great. You know, I think that obviously, like, I'm I'm someone who cares deeply about like teenagers. I like I'm writing for teenagers, and I think that they deserve mm-hmm. like really amazing art, fun. They deserve stuff like and really a storyline without yes, like something smart. Yeah, that, like and I without making like, fun of them, right? And I think this movie does that. It's not condescending to teenagers. It's smart. It's, um, I'm sure if I watched it again, I would catch things I didn't catch before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's smart also in the fact that if you know anything about the story of like the actual book Frankenstein, like they do a lot of nods to it, right? Yes. They did a lot of homages, um, to Mary Shelley herself mm-hmm. and also to the book Frankenstein, but to the author too, who apparently, um, her mother died in childbirth. And so she had kind of a rough childhood and she would actually go visit her mother's grave to be close to her mm. and we see that in the movie it's not lisa frankenstein or lisa swallows um 
it's not her mom's grave. It's they, they make it into the man's grave. Um, but that's kind of where she finds comfort and mm-hmm. peace and everything where she goes to tell, um, someone that she loves them. Uh, they did it in a lot of different ways. That was yeah. really nice just to her own personal life. She also had a stepmother and stepsister that mm-hmm. she didn't get along with. And I just think how they, they did that without actually like making it about her life and yeah. how they kind of made it into a, a different story yeah. and it kind of gave it her happier ending mm-hmm. in a way. As we said, this movie is PG-13, although I think you and I both agree that this is more like 16, mm-hmm. for yeah. sure. I do think the first maybe half hour of the movie, I was like, oh, this is great. And then like we said, it escalates and then goes it back does. down. Like, So the parts that are a little more of innuendos or a little heavier kind of content is very obvious. Yes. And like the innuendos don't, like I feel like that would be one thing because... They're in, where they're more like they're like slick. Sometimes they can go over your yeah, head. Yeah, you didn't even fine. notice a couple of them. I didn't. I had to remind. <laughs> and then when I did, I was like, <laughs> um, but then it does start just being more like explicit, like in your face stuff. So a lot of innuendos. Yes. So she has a vibrator. She does. Um, she tells the creature that it's a back massager at first. Yes. Um, but we know it's not. But that's like for that laughs, was funny, right? That was for just laughs. funny. But then, <laughs> but then he's kind of massaging her back, and then she goes, "You know, people don't uh, people don't only just use this for the back. Yeah. Sometimes people use it in other places." Yeah, and then they don't show the scene, but they do kind of. It definitely alludes. It definitely alludes. Yes. I thought they were going to show the scene at first, and I was like, "I can't." I don't think it was. <laughs> but they don't. They don't show it. She does say she doesn't want to die a virgin. She doesn't want to die a virgin. The whole honestly, like third act is her trying to make sure that that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time she she's like, she wants to get with Michael. Yes. Um, but the creature is kind of like, you know, falling in oh, love yeah. with her. He's completely devoted to her. Yeah. And she just doesn't really realize that he's the same weird as her. So basically, in order for us to talk about this part, this is, we're going to warn you, a spoiler. A bit of a spoiler. This is a spoiler. So if you don't want to be spoiled, then, you know. But this is the main. But this is the, probably the biggest thing that if you, if I was a parent, I would be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> just happened the whole theater was like what just happened <laughs> was that necessary <laughs> right towards the end when we're getting to the climax um she and creature go to michael the crush's house because that's who she wants to have sex with she finds her stepsister in bed with him instead yes creature saw the stepsister's car outside so he kind of already knows so he follows her inside and the whole point of the storyline is um, they have to find him different body parts. So they have, they find him an ear. Mm-hmm. Um, they find him a hand mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, and he's kind of will do anything right. for Lisa. Right. So Lisa is overreacting. She is freaking out at her stepsister, yes. Michael. Yes. And Michael is so patronizing. He calls her he kiddo. Calls kiddo. Oh. I would lose it too. She did a phenomenal job. Yeah, great. Losing great it. rampage. Like, and, and even her stepsister looked like she regretted it too. Yeah. But the creature comes in. And we already kind of know this is a problem because the creature has already been violent. Violent, so yes. So he comes in with an axe. And he... <sighs> wields it at Michael's lower half. Um, chops it right off. And we see the shadow of it flying. I will in the air. <laughs> and landing in the wastebasket. And in the wastebasket. I will say the blood splattering on everyone's face in the slow motion was hilarious. Yes. And over the top and very, very like 80s gory like yes. type. I, but I didn't see that. And then it kills him. It kills him. Now, we'll talk about violence at some point, too. This is mostly for the sexual content part of it because it's his thing that she, he's chopping off. Um, but it is played for laughs. Yes, it, it is. is played for it laughs. is definitely hammed up a bit. Right. It's very, like, they have this funny, like, 80s song in the background. I think it's On the Wings of Love or something. Yeah. So that's, that's probably, I think, out of everything in the movie, that was probably the thing that I would most be like... Well, for me, it wasn't even that. I mean... Them showing the shadow is kind of like, okay, whatever. Because, I mean, if you've seen Mean Girls, there's so many different mm-hmm. innuendos and, like, you're shots seeing, like, and stuff like that. You, and the 10 things I hate about you, like, draws it on his forehead. Yeah. Like, pe- kids, kids, it's, it's fine. By, by the time they're in high school, you know. Yeah. My thing, though, was that 
Lisa, when he gets the different body parts, she helps him sew it back together. So there is yes. a shot where he is just standing there and she's kneeling in front of him, helping him sew that particular body part back on him. And that yes. is what I found a little over suggestive. That was very suggestive because it also just looks a certain way. It, that, yeah. it looks a certain exactly. way. The way that they like paint it out. Exactly. Um, it's still played for laughs. It's still played for laughs. Yes. And it doesn't but, show too much. And it doesn't show. It doesn't linger yeah. a ton, but it is just like, oh. Yeah. Um, there is a, I'm going to put quotes around sex scene because it's not really a sex scene. It's implied. So it's a fade to black sex scene and they make it kind of funny because she really likes this one silent film. What's it called again? That Le silent? Voyage. Le Voyage. Yeah. Like, it's a it's a 1920s French film. And, and it's got it, the moon. It, it has, it, it, she has a poster of it on her um door and everything in her closet and it is the moon and it's like they landed on the moon so there's like it looks to me it reminds me of like the shape of a bullet but it's like it's a like spaceship. a rocket spaceship it's a rocket spaceship but it's all it's obviously suggestive like we know what that means and then it goes to the moon so it's kind of like yeah that's that's how you know that that's what happened that's they did the thing yeah so it's like an it's like done in a tame kind of fun artsy cutesy yes, because way. her and the creature end up getting together at right. the end and it's them kind of right um everything is escalating and she's like there's you know we got to do it now because the thing is she thinks that she's gonna go to jail for all the stuff that's why she doesn't think she yes because she does do she breaks the law a lot yeah and by breaking the law we mean we might as well go into violence she kill well she doesn't kill but the uh they kill someone the creature Creature kills someone kills someone and she got like a rush from that from it and so she finds their next target because he got the ear he got the the ear from the first death and then the second person they chop off the hand the hand be which i thought was funny because it was the hand of uh the guy who um in the beginning of the film they're at a house party and he takes advantage of lisa because she accidentally took some illicit drugs and so he takes her into a back room and he tries to kind of grope her, get mm-hmm. handsy, which is also why there's the suggestive uh, content mm-hmm. rating. Um, and so she gets revenge on it. They chop yeah. his hand off. Right. And she's like, you don't have to feel bad about this creature because that hand was going to do bad things. And now it's on you and you can do beautiful things with it because he plays the piano. Yeah. Which honestly, <laughs> I thought was kind of sick. <laughs> <laughs> like, go girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it kills him. It does. And they bury him in the graveyard um, with their other victim, yeah. which would be too spoiler, so we won't tell you. Yeah. Uh, but it is pretty good. The violence is also played for laughs. Very much. So it says that there is some gore and, like, bloody violence, mm-hmm. but even when they're doing the um, big flashback of her mom getting murdered, yeah. like, it's very played up. There's not, like, a ton yeah. of blood. Like, so if you're queasy or something. It's, yeah, it's not like a... It's not... It's it's dark, but it's not dark. Yeah. Like honestly, I felt more darkness in Heather's than I did watching yeah. this. So oh, it's definitely played for it's definitely for laughs. It is, but if you you know if your kid is sensitive about that, or they if you're don't... sensitive about your kid watching that, it is they are chopping body parts off. Yeah, but they don't linger on it too much. Like it's not just like giant pools yeah. of blood no. and stabbing. It's, it's very and... irreverent. It's very like what? <laughs> very cut and dry. So yes. Speak. I mean, she's sewing body parts on. So if that makes you crazy, there's needles. She's sewing body but parts on. Obviously, tell it's like a prosthetic. Um. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was actually a ro- very romantic part when they. <laughs> when... This girl thinks this movie is romantic. Parents, guys, this movie is not romantic. Guys, it's Valentine's Day, and Parents. at first I was like, "This is a Halloween movie," but I think it's phenomenal promotion that they made it release just before Valentine's Day, and that we're that's why we decided to cover this for Valentine's Day. I thought it was cute because when she's sewing his ear back, he's laying with his head in her lap, and so she's sewing the ear. On and the by side. his ear, she really means someone else's. Someone ear. else's ear. <laughs> and I just think it was such a sweet, tender moment because he's, he's just... laying on her lap and whatever. No, it's not sweet. It's a very <laughs> strange, very strange. Yeah. But if you have a twisted sense of humor, then maybe you can think it's sweet, which is why I think it's sweet. <laughs> Um, but there was one other thing that I'm not sure if it's if it's a big red flag, but it does go into the more adult side content, which is the ending and what she kind of talks about throughout the so whole she, movie. the whole movie. So she, at one point, tells creature that she doesn't 
when she hung out at his grave, it wasn't because she wanted to be with him, be with him. She said, I wish I were with you. So that's why he thought he thought she wanted to be with him romantically. Yes. And then when he comes to life, she's like, no, I didn't mean it romantically. I meant I wanted to be in the ground with you. So she's kind like of not on earth. Because she's a little people suck. She's a little emo. Yeah. Girly. And that kind of continues throughout the entire. And I think that's a reason why she's so detached from what they're doing to people because she doesn't really want to be here anymore. Like she's just very yeah. much like well, tapped out. Therapy wasn't invented in no, the 80s no. yet. So um, I guess it could be a commentary on like what happened to her was actually really traumatic. And a lot of people literally just everyone in the movie just brushes it off like it's no big deal yeah like even the sister when she was talking about it it's like yeah well my mom met her dad like a month later and it's it's so it's so nice that that happened because now she has a mom again and it's like you don't even realize like that's crazy yeah and they all just and the dad just doesn't care get, doesn't say doesn't anything. care about anything he's he plays the dad in stranger things i want to say yeah. and he's literally a typical eight Tip, typical 80s dad there's a moment where stepsister said something really sexual at the table and she goes in that right daddy and he could tell he wasn't even listening he's like oh yeah, yeah yep. knock him dead. Like, yeah, I'm like, dead. What? oh because she says that so um because lisa goes through like this transformation because she's starting to open up again so she's right. wearing she's starting to know, wear more and more she calls it pirate what she calls she's like pirate core slutty something I mean, slutty pirate. i don't know <laughs> um and so the stepsister's like everyone's gonna be getting ready to go to bone town yeah. <laughs> and then the dad is like Oh, yeah, totally. You go there. Just be back by curfew, you know? <laughs> like, um, towards the end, she realizes that the cops are on her tail. People are figuring things out. Yeah. These like, murders oh, they've committed. The boy is missing. What's going on? Oh, we saw you with him the night that he died and all that stuff. Yeah. And so she's like, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in jail. Something's going to happen. I don't want to die virgin. There's only <laughs> one way, one one way out of this. Yeah. And so, essentially, she they she kind of <laughs> dies. She dies um, by her own hand. She gives the, a note to the creature saying, "Death is temporary. If you have, I will love you forever. <laughs> if you have a kid whose thought processes don't all the way follow through, sometimes maybe explain to them that that's not that's, really real. Yeah, death is permanent. Very much so. The average." The average team will be fine. The team will be fine. It's like, but like, I know there's some teens out there. I I was a teenager. There's some teens out there who'd be like, yeah, it's totally temporary. Which is also why I definitely would not recommend it for anyone under 13. Oh, definitely. For sure. And even 13. I would not. Unless you watched it, maybe if you watched it with them and explained things, but even then, you're going to be uncomfortable, I think. You're going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I definitely think if once they're 16, they realize that those types of jokes are... Right inherently they're just jokes essentially if your child is at a mental state right now where they could be easily triggered Mm -hmm. um by certain thoughts uh then like you like to say definitely just know your kid yeah know your kid like some kids will think they'll see the humor in it they'll think it's funny um but if your kid will take it too seriously you know then maybe not because they do talk about you know ending your life Right. Very kind of like, obviously. Right. But they are doing it in a very comedic way, mm-hmm. over dramatic 80s way, very just like right. teen angst way, and a way to show her coping right. and how she's feeling without it getting too sensitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it is kind of a give and take. Yeah. Uh, I still think it's safe for most teens to watch. Yeah. Uh, but if you are at a point right now where you are concerned about that with a child, then uh, maybe not have them watch it now or maybe watch it with them or something. Right, yeah. I overall think that it is a pretty solid teen movie. Yes, yes. And if you're, oh, I, I forgot. If you're worried that it's scary, it's not scary. It's, no. It's more comedy than horror. It it's absolutely is definitely a comedy. It's satire. It's def yeah. It is very dramatic. Yeah. It's and, a little gross, but it's not, like, yes. scary. <laughs> yes. I felt like a teen wrote it yeah. at times. Yeah, yeah. With how, like, just funny mm-hmm. it was and how you said how it really tells a story of teenager dumb really yeah. well mm-hmm. uh it's a zomcom it's a zomcom at the end of the day i mean it's so strange it's hard that's how it's hard to put into words because they cover such dark material but at the same time it's very light yes it's very detached and i've noticed that like that i do think it's more hard to pull off than we think it, it is, is but they pull it off really really well where it's like from the jump like we didn't feel 
dark and twisty no. afterward. It didn't sit I heavy mean, with me. There was a at the end. I did feel really bad for the stepsister because I was like. Yes, she goes through it. I also think that it's maybe because it doesn't feel like the stepsister knows that she's in a, a Zomcom. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, she, like, all the other characters are so offbeat that you kind of get the sense that they know what movie they're in. And I feel like the stepsister doesn't know what movie she's in. I so love that, though. she witnesses The that, dad like, doesn't know what movie he's the in. The dad. But the dad is, like, so, like, whatever. But the sister, she's, like, emotional kid. So when she sees what's going on, she throws a scene where she's, like, walking in a field after just witnessing what happened and she's so traumatized and she's this, like covered in blood covered in blood and feathers right and this like, car drives by and, and they look he like sees her and he's like what? And, like shrugs and keeps driving which again it's funny it's commentary but like it's like mind your own i business. did feel bad for her in that moment i did feel like this is really this girl, sad this girl's <laughs> <laughs> but it is most it's not that's me that's mostly me i'm a sensitive girly i'm a sensitive girly um but most people, I think, especially most teenagers, will probably not be that sensitive yeah. about it. They'll think they'll probably think it's really funny. I think it was cute. I haven't seen anything kind of like that in a while. Yeah, I don't think it was like anything a cinematic greatness. You know, like yeah. they weren't trying to be like this amazing film. Like it was just a you know a, just a really good zomcom. It was a great. It was a great lighthearted, funny zomcom, if not a bit uncomfortable yeah. in parts. So just know your kid. Yeah. And if you have any questions, you can always email us at watchlikeakid at gmail.com. Catherine Newton, Cole Sprouse, you guys did. What's up? Great job. Phenomenal. Great job. Cole, I'm really glad you got to talk at the end. (laughs) Oh. And if you want to let us know what your audition was like for this. Or did they just go, he looks like he probably can walk with a limp. Let's give him the role. Please let us know. I am really interested because honestly, you did kill the grunting thing. But I do want to know, did you have to grunt to audition or did they just give you the role? Did you have a walking coach? Yeah. Zombies? Did you watch a lot of like thriller? Also, how did y'all not laugh in these scenes? Because the scenes were so over the top, but they were so serious. And I... That is one thing, like, it's very rare that we go, like, you go into a, movie, a comedy, especially comedy so hard to pull off, yeah. and you're, like, laughing out loud. Yeah. There might be someone who's like, uh-huh, but, like, the entire, you already said this, but she was not joking with me, the entire theater was laughing out laughing. loud in certain parts. Like, it was so funny. I do think it's not going to be everyone's taste of humor. So, again, yeah. that's, like, know who you are, sure. know your kid. It's dark humor. If you don't like dark humor, you will not think this is a funny movie. For sure. You have to like dark humor. I think it's also good for adults, too. Oh, Yeah. It yeah. was it was so it was great, mm-hmm. but I think it was it, it like you said comedy can be so hard mm-hmm. and even like rom coms too because people don't think it takes good acting, but because it, it's not like gonna win an Oscar or anything. Right. But in some ways, it's even harder. Oh yeah, so you got to keep a straight face. Yeah. You got to be serious even though you're talking to a zombie. <laughs> oh yeah, this is not a rom com. Also, I refuse to believe that this is a romantic comedy. I don't. <laughs> it's like that. What is it? Um, is is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Oh, yeah, like, it's okay, like a yeah. debate. I um, refuse to believe that this If you guys is a have rom-com. seen it, please let us know. <laughs> rom com or not? Rom com, zom com, just a com. <laughs> let us know in the comments. <sighs> Gabby, can we like be done? Yeah, I'm like over this. Do you want to go to Bud Records? Oh yeah. Okay, then like, bye or whatever. <sighs> bye. That's not a unicorn. That's just a pony with pink hair.